Hello everyone and welcome to my long overdue bookshelf tour. So I've been putting off filming this video for so long because I feel like the timing is never perfect, but today I have time so I decided to film my bookshelf tour. It's never going to be perfect. I already have books stacking up everywhere, but it's okay. It will never be perfect probably and I just feel like if I keep putting it off I will never do it, so just gonna do it now and it'll be fun to look back on this bookshelf tour in the future and see how it changed and what books I had now and yeah let's just get into it if you've seen my bookshelf reorganization video I will link it up here somewhere uh, you probably already know how I organize my books and all the bookshelves that I have around my room because this is not the only one. This is the bookshelf that I have on the background of my videos, but I have other bookshelves that I don't show as much uh, because of the lighting. Honestly, this one just has better lighting, so I film here. The last time I counted my book collection, I had 180 books, I think, but that was a long time ago and I think since then I've acquired more books and I think I have about 200 books now, I think, roughly. I should count them, but I don't want to. Uh, so yeah, I think I have about 200. So let's start! So this is the first bookshelf that I'm going to show you and it's the one that you see on the background of most of my videos and I got it off of Ikea last year and I really like it, but it's already pretty full, like you can see here has four shelving spaces. Here on top I have just a bunch of things that I've had honestly since the beginning of my channel. I never really changed much of this, but I have this little pumpkin here just because we're in October and it's the spooky season and all. Then here I have a vanilla and coconut candle that I honestly don't know where I got it from but it smells really good. Then back here I have my Harry Potter wands. Honestly, I don't know where else to put them because they're so big. I have a Luna Lovegood on top and then I have one from Ollivanders that I got at the Harry Potter theme parks, uh, the one in Orlando. Then I have my Chocolate Frog and my Birdie Bot's Every Flavored Beans, which honestly are rotting here inside and I should throw them out. <laughs> uh, probably will. Then back here, I don't know if you can see this, but I usually take this from my video because it just looks ugly but I have basically my earrings and accessories here in a little like container. I should get a proper like accessory shelving or like something to keep them all together but I just put them all here. They're all like unorganized. Then here I have this like metal um, what is this called? This is like for cars, I guess, from Disneyland Paris that I got secondhand. I just like the colors, so I keep it here. Then I have here my Frida Kahlo wood frame, I guess. Uh, you could put this like on the wall, as you can see, uh, but I keep it here and it has a quote by Frida Kahlo, Pies para que los quiero, si tengo alas para volar. I don't speak Spanish, I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, I really like this. My mom got it for me. And I've had this here since the beginning of my channel on the background of every single one of my videos, so I think I cannot take this off by now because it's just like a constant in all of my videos. It's that Frida Kahlo uh, wood thing, so yeah. Then here I have two Funko Pops from the Disney movie Hercules, which is my favorite Disney movie. I have Baby Hercules and I have Meg next to it. I really love them and I love having them here. Now moving on to the books, this is the first shelf that I have and it has mostly my favorite series, my favorite authors, uh, mostly series and mostly Rick Riordan, like it's half of the bookshelf and I'm still missing some books so it'll probably fit this entire shelf. First of all I have this plant here. I don't know what this plant is. I think it's aloe vera, I'm not sure. And it also has a Belgian flag here that spent so much time in the sun that it's like a piece of paper with black on it right now but it used to be a Belgian flag and since I lived in Belgium I just like to keep that flag there. I don't know why I should throw it out, honestly. And the first books that I have here are the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I have the box set that I'm not going to open because once I take one of the books out I can never put them back in, so I just 
yeah, this was an effort to put them all back in. And then I have three of the books of the Heroes of Olympus series. I still need to get the other two, but basically these were the ones that I read physically. I have The Lost Hero, The Son of Neptune, and The Blood of Olympus, which is the last book. So I'm still missing The Mark of Athena and The House of Eighties but I don't know which editions I want because I have the American paperbacks for these first two and then the last one I have in hardback and it was a special edition on Waterstones that I got in London. So I don't know, I don't know if I want the paperback for the other two, but like the American paperback or if I want the American hardbacks. I don't know, I'm still confused, but I want to reread these books, so I'm definitely getting the other two volumes. And then I have Percy Jackson, Greek Heroes, and this is like a companion novel to the series, like the whole series, and I still haven't read this one, but I really want to get to it. Then I have the first three volumes in the Trials of Apollo series, The Hidden Oracle, The Dark Prophecy, and The Burning Maze. I love these books, I still need to get the fourth one, and the fifth one is coming out like in a few days, I think. Then I have The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer, and this is the same thing as my Heroes of Olympus series. I am missing Winter because I read it on ebook, but I want to get it physically so that I can reread the series. I have Cinder, Scarlet, Cress, Fairest, uh, so I'm still missing Winter. Then I have Renegades by Marissa Meyer, and I still haven't read this one, but I want to get to it. Then I have Heartless by Marissa Meyer, Love this book, absolute favorite. Then I have here the Hunger Games trilogy, which I reread this year and I really like it. Then I have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. I hate this edition of Daisy Jones, it's so big. Then moving on to the second shelf here, I have historical fiction and then general fiction, like adult fiction, basically. But I feel like the categories on my shelves aren't that strict. I've talked about this on my bookshelf reorganization video as well. I just try to put them roughly in the categories that they're in, but at the same time, if they don't look good together, I will put them somewhere else. So it kind of looks presentable, I guess. I put them mostly in genres and in heights. So here I start with historical fiction. I have The Mercies by Kieran Midwell Hargrave. I have Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I have Blood, Water, Paint by Joy McCullough. I have The Shadow of the Wind and The Angels Game by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. I have the Diviner series here. I have The Diviner's Lair of Dreams, Before the Devil Breaks You, and The King of Crows. Also, I have to show you like this cover of The Diviner's. I don't see a lot of people with this cover and it's so gorgeous. I am so happy that I have this edition. This is one of the early editions of the book and I just absolutely love it. And honestly, since I'm showing you books, I could show you also the cover of The Shadow of the Wind. I have Portuguese editions of this book because I love this. This has like a floppy cover that has the title and then it's just like blank book with a picture on it and I just love it. And then like, do you see? I can't really explain it well, but I think you get the picture and I just really love these editions. Then I have Under the Idolatries by Chanel Oak Bronto, one of my favorites of this year. I have Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. I have The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. The Familiars by Stacey Halls. The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, one of my favorites as well. I have Annalise by David Gilham. I have The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John... John Boyne, <laughs> sorry. And I have One Day by David Nichols, and this is where I, like, draw the separation between general fiction and historical fiction, because this is kind of both, I think? I don't remember it that well, I read it a long, long time ago. So then I have my general fiction, I have Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, I have Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, I have Otesha Moshfag's My Year of Rest and Relaxation, I have Normal People by Sally Rooney. I have Elizabeth is Missing by Emma Healy. And I think this could be categorized as a mystery, but I just keep it here for now. Then I have City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. And this technically should be here with historical fiction, 
but since it's so small I just like to keep it furthest from like the middle of the shelves otherwise it would just like ruin the flow of the books if you know what I mean. I used to have it here but I just moved it and I also have The Rosie Project by Graeme Simeon. Then I have Sleep by Ruki Murakami. This is a short story graphic novel kind of thing. And finally I have Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. And since this is a hardback, I just keep it at the end of the shelf. And now for my last shelf here. This is kind of a random shelf. First of all, I have my like mystery thrillers, horror here. I just, I only have three books of that genre. Uh, so I just, I put them there. I don't know. Then I have like children's books. Then I have manga, only three volumes of Sailor Moon. And then I have three non-fiction that just wouldn't fit with the other non-fiction so I just started collecting them here and since I'm definitely going to buy more non-fiction I'll just start putting them here on the shelf. So I have The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, I have Wilder Girls by Rory Power, I have My Sister the Serial Killer by Duncan Braithwaite, I have Darth Vader and Sun. This is such an old book that I got so long ago but this is like a graphic novel with like Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker and it's just really funny I, and I love the illustrations. Yeah, I really like this. One day when I have uh, children I will definitely show this to them. Then I have this um, old illustrated version of The Sleeping Beauty in Portuguese. This is from like the 70s I think. It says here 1969, yeah. And this is like the Disney version of The Sleeping Beauty and it has a lot of illustrations and I just think it's such a gem that I had to buy it. I bought it in like a secondhand fair and I just really like it as well. Then I have The Hobbit and honestly the only reason I don't get rid of this book is this gorgeous cover because I didn't like The Hobbit. I just don't like this world. I also don't like Lord of the Rings. I never read the books, but I just don't like the movies, um, being honest right here. But I just love this edition of The Hobbit so much that I just keep it. Ah, I don't know. Then one book that I definitely want to buy a new copy of and that I want to reread is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I feel like I didn't appreciate this book when I read it, so I definitely want to reread it now that I'm older. Uh, then I have A Bear Called Paddington by Michael Bond. I love Paddington, if you didn't know that about me. Um, then I have The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. One of my favorite books ever, one of my favorite stories ever. I just absolutely love The Wizard of Oz. Then I have the first three volumes of Sailor Moon. I want to buy the other ones. I just haven't been getting to them for some reason, but I want to buy them. Um, and then I have three nonfiction. I have The Greek Myths by Robin Waterfield. I have Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Haig. And I have How to Give Up Plastic by Will McCullum. And this book is really good. Please pick it up. And then right here I have this wooden box. And this is basically where I keep my borrowed books. If anyone gives me a book that I should read or if I borrow any book from anyone, I just keep it here. So I know that I need to return it and read it, obviously, before returning it. But I just keep them all here and I have a bunch of them. I have some that my grandma gave me, I have some for my boyfriend, some for my sister. So I just keep them all here just for me to know that it's not mine, basically. And that I need to read them fast so I can give them to their owner. I just, I have a really big pet peeve when it comes to lending my own books and not getting them returned because it has happened in the past so I don't want to do the same to someone so I keep them all here in this wooden box that I got at Ikea and then here I have a 3D puzzle of the night bus from Harry Potter I really like it but I just don't know where to put it so I just leave it here just chilling and as for books on this bookshelf that is all because down here I have a problem area, which is when I was like 12 or something, I started collecting snow globes. Every place that I went, I brought a snow globe with me. Also, some people just brought them for me because they knew I had a collection. 
and that collection got out of hand real quick and as you can see I have a lot of them it's a problem and this is not all of them because I have other snow globes in other places of my room I have about like 80 or 70 um, snow globes it's a problem I don't know what to do with them this is the only solution that I had for them because yeah I just don't know where to store them and I kind of feel like throwing them out but at the same time I really like them I don't know I don't know man but for now I just keep them here on my bookshelf I wish I had the space for books but I just can't that is all for this first bookshelf that I have now moving on to the other ones now this is my second shelving space and it's basically one of those like cube um, things and it has six little cubes where I can store books and here I store mostly fantasy, contemporary, uh, some mystery, some science fiction and some other general fiction that I don't know just looks good together and also graphic novels. I just have a bunch of things here so let's just get to it but first let me show you the things that I have up here. So first of all this up here looks a bit empty because I have a lot of pictures with my family and I just took them out because privacy and stuff. First of all I have two seashells here. Um, this one I painted gold for some reason. I don't know let's not talk about it but then I have this one that I really really like it's really pretty so I have Mulan here I have Buzz Lightyear from the first Toy Story movie uh, where he dresses as Mrs. Nesbitt I think she's called I don't know uh, but I really like this one it's really funny and also Toy Story is my favorite uh, Pixar movie so yeah back there I have a Hogwarts cauldron um, just creeping in the background and then I have my Lilo uh, Funko Pop that I also really like. I really like that she's holding a camera and then I have this like little Polaroid picture of me and my boyfriend. Um, then I have Tiana which is one of my favorite Disney princesses and it was actually I think my second Funko Pop ever. Um, I just really really love her. Then I have a rock here that says my name and it says what it means which is strong warrior I think. I really like the meaning of my names honestly but it fits nothing with me. <laughs> and then I have Snow White which is also one of my favorite princesses especially because a lot of people used to tell me I look like Snow White so I just really like her for that. Uh, probably because of the hair. I don't know. Then I have a picture here that says basically I can do whatever I want. I can and I will. Um, it's in Portuguese obviously so there's not a direct translation but that's basically what it's saying and my mom got it for me. Then back there behind this frame it's my mess of candles. I'm not gonna show you all of them but, but basically I just have a bunch of candles there. When I want one I just go there and take one and light it. Um, so yeah that's all that I have here. Now moving on to my actual bookshelf. This is my first one and I have a Funko Pop of Mickey from Kingdom Hearts here that I really like but I'm gonna put him here so I can show you the books. First I have the selection series um, which I really like honestly. Not gonna pretend I don't because I really do. Then I have Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Lyricens. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Then I have Lola and the Boy Next Door and Isla and the Happily Ever After by Stephanie Perkins. There are different editions but I don't care and honestly I still need to read this one. I read the first one and this one but I never read the second one for some reason. Then I have With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. Then I have The Sun is Also a Star and Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. I have Wonder by R.J. Palacio and then I have The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, staple book in the booktip community to be honest if you've been here for a really long time. Now in this shelf I basically have contemporary books um, in the start of my fantasy section and I have BB-8 from Star Wars here but I'm gonna put them elsewhere so I can show you the books. I'm already stacking here. I have Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake up here because I have nowhere to put it. Then I have Dig by A.S. King. I have 
They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera, Radio Silence by Alice Oseman, The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. I know this is considered mostly poetry, but I don't have a poetry section. This is actually, I think, my only poetry book. Then I have The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Penn, also one of my favorites of this year. I have To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I have All the Bad Apples by Maura Fowley Doyle. I have Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn, which I do not like the spine. I don't like that you ba can barely see the title of the book, but oh well, it is what it is. Also, Amazon fucked up my package and it looks like this. Great. Um, then I have On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. Uh, because it's a bigger book, I separated my Angie Thomas books. Then I have We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, which I really want to get to. And then I have Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia here at the end. And then it starts my like fantasy shelf. Here I have my TBR jar, which I haven't updated in a while here. I'm gonna take it out. Then I have Abu from the Aladdin movies, which are one of my favorites. Here I have basically almost all fantasy, but I do have Mexican Gothic here at first because it's kind of next to the other Sylvia Moreno Garcia book, so I just keep it here. Also because it's a hardback, so I keep all my hardbacks here. I don't know, I just don't have a lot of hardbacks. Then I have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I have Middle Game by Shannon McGuire. I have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern because it's a smaller edition, obviously, than The Starless Sea. I just keep them separate. I have Sight by Neil Schusterman, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, and A Darker Shade of Magic by V. Schwab. I don't know what I will do when I start buying the next books in this series, but for now, it is what it is. And up here, I'm already stacking. I have Cinderella is Dead by Kellen Bayron. This cover is so gorgeous. I just can't stop looking at it. I don't really have an angle to show you the books that I have here, but as you can see, I have my Mortal Instruments series and my Divergent series, um, which I am kind of planning on getting rid of, especially the Mortal Instruments books, because I don't feel like I'm ever going to read them, so yeah. And then I have Son of a Witch by Gregory McGuire, which is the second book in the Wicked series, which I want to read, so I already got the first book to read that series. Down here I have my science fiction and also my Agatha Christie books, I have Delirium, which is the first book in the Delirium series by Lauren Oliver. I have Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, which I love. I have The Power by Naomi Alderman. I have Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I have The Circle by Dave Eggers. And then all my Agatha Christie books, I'm not going to say every single title, but I have a bunch of them in Portuguese. I also have these really old and vintage editions of two of Agatha Christie's books, which I really like. And then on this last shelf, I honestly have a bunch of random books that are really big, like really tall, so I just put them all together. First of all, I have graphic novels. The first one that I have is The People Inside by Ray Fox. I got this in high school and honestly, it completely broke me. This is such a, a interesting and also depressing graphic novel, but it's so well done and I absolutely love it. If you can pick it up, please do. Then the next graphic novel that I have is actually Shrek by William Steig. This is the original work that inspired the movie Shrek that we all know and love. Most people don't know that Shrek was based off a children's uh, illustration book, but it was, so yeah. Then next I have my saga books. I have volume 1 and volume 2 in English, and then I have volume 3 and volume 4, which is up here in Portuguese in a hardcover. Then I have this book in Portuguese. This is a very famous book and it's basically about a lot of um, women in history that were relevant in some way. We have Malala here for example. And this is by Elena Favilli and Francesca Cavallo. Also because there are a lot of women in here that I don't know about, so it's always interesting to know more. Then I have my Humans of New York book 
by Brendan Stanton. I think this is the first one that they published. Then I have the first two books in the Gemma Doyle series by Libba Bray in Portuguese. I never finished the series because the third book was never published in Portuguese. Then I have If Only by Melanie Murphy. I have All I Know Now on the other side. All That She Can See and When the Curtain Falls by Carrie Hope Fletcher. And then I have uh, O Amor é Fedido by Miguel Esteves Cardoso, which is a Portuguese author. And honestly, I don't really like that book, so I don't know why I still have it. Now, moving on from down here to up here, I have more shelving space. And right now I do have that little Halloween banner because it's October. This shelf up here is where I keep my classics and also books by Portuguese authors and just bigger books in general. But first I'm going to just quickly show you what's around it, I guess. So in this corner I just have a bunch of stuff that I got from like trips that I went and just like little souvenirs I keep here. I have this from Dubai, I have this from Paris, and I have this from... Honestly, I don't know. I don't know if someone got this for me or I got it, honestly. Um, but yeah, I just heap souvenirs here. Then back there, all those cups are basically cups that I got at music festivals because there's always that option of having like a reusable cup all throughout the festival, so I always get them and I just have a bunch of them. Some even have like what I saw um, in that festival, like Kendrick Lamar. Here I have a Viewmaster that I got in the US when I was little. And I still actually keep a lot of the pictures that I have that come with it. And I have, I think, a Tweety story. And I also have some from like, I don't know, SeaWorld or something? I don't know anymore, but I just really like this Viewmaster. I will keep it forever for some reason. It just looks so nice. I don't know. I just love the colors. And then in this corner is just a bunch of stuff that I honestly don't like. I don't like how it looks, but I have a Kingdom Hearts goofy figurine. I have this bobblehead Yoda. Then I have a bunch of Legos like Star Wars Legos, um, Disney Legos behind, and also just like random uh, Disney figurines that you get in like those mystery boxes. Um, it's all like stacked here and I don't like how it looks but also don't know where to put them. And now as for books, first of all I have my big ass copy of David Copperfield by Charles Dickens here. Had to read this for my bachelor so have it here. Then I have Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov which I don't like. I didn't like this book and I don't like the story. Then I have books by Fernand Pessoa. So I have The Book of the Squiet and then I have Obra Completa de Albert Campos. And I have, I don't know if this has a translation, but it's probably like The Message by Fernand Pessoa. Yeah, probably that. And then up here I have all of my José Saramag books. Not going to translate all of them, but I have Balthazar and Blimunda have The Gospel According to Jesus Christ, I have Blindness, uh, Seeing, um, The Year of Death of Ricard Reis, and this one, I uh, don't know if it has a translation, but yeah, these are my José Cinemag collection, it's still small. Then moving on to my classics, I have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, I have The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare, I have 1984, and Books and Cigars, I don't know if that's the translation, by George Orwell. I have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I have this The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle, but it's the uh, TV show version, which I really like. And I have The Color Purple by Alice Walker. I have Ham on Rye in Hollywood by Charles Bukowski. I have Fahrenheit 451, also Zen in the Art of Writing by Ray Bradbury. I have The God of Small Things by Arun T. Roy, 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriela Garcia Marquez. These two, one of them is by Victor Hugo, but this one, I don't know the translation. Maybe you can help me. Apuleo? I don't know, I'll put it on the screen if I find the translation, but also I still haven't read this book. 
um, so I don't know. And this one by Victor Hugo I think is The Last Day of a Condemned Man. Then I have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, Wench by Dolan Perkins Valdez, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka, this is a collection of stories by Edgar Allan Poe, and this is a collection of poems by Flor Bela Spanka, who is a Portuguese author or poet, I guess. Then on this floating shelf I have my Harry Potter books, I have the Hufflepuff collector's edition of the first book, and then I have my whole, like, collection of Harry Potter books that I bought last year, unfortunately, and I have my Harry Potter Funko Pop and also a Hermione Granger figurine. I just think they look better here than they did before on my shelves, and this way I'm not constantly putting Harry Potter in my videos and in your face, so that's nice. And we have finally reached the last shelf that I have in my room, and this basically stores all of my non-fiction other than the three books that are on the other shelf. So here is basically all my nonfiction. The first few books are in Portuguese and since they're all the same size, which is the standard size here in Portugal, I put them all together. The first one is a gardening book by a Portuguese author and it's really helpful because I'm always trying to garden more. Then this one is a German book actually by Christian F and I don't know what it is called in English, but I will try to put it here on the screen. Uh, I know the German uh, original title is really hard to pronounce, so I'm not even going to try it, but it's by Kristin F and it's about her childhood and dealing with drugs um, in Berlin. This one is Auto Control by August Curry. Then I have three books by Black American authors. I have Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes. I have Between the World and Me by Tennessee Coates. And I have Me and White Supremacy by Leila F. Saad. I do want to get more books like these uh, about uh, being anti-racist, but these are the ones that I have right now. And then I have The Diary of Anne Frank by, obviously, Anne Frank. It's in Portuguese. It's one of my oldest books here in my entire collection, and I just treasure it so much. Then here I have basically art-related books. I have The Diary of Frida Kahlo. I have On Photography by Susan Sontag. I have the biography of Frida Kahlo by Hayden Herrera. Um, this little book is basically a children's book about Frida Kahlo and it's super nice. I love the illustrations. Then I have Everything Bad is Good for You by Stephen Johnson. And this is a book about the effects of media and popular culture and TV shows on our lives. And it was really interesting. I studied for um, my bachelor's. Then I have this little book by Van Gogh and it's in French and it has like a bunch of his paintings and just like little des descriptions of them and I just really like it. And now the last books on my shelves are memoirs basically. I have Miles to Go by Miley Cyrus, I have The Princess Diaries and Wishful Drinking and Shockaholic by Carrie Fisher, I have Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, I have Adam Kay's This Is Going To Hurt, and I have a book by Ellen DeGeneres for some reason, which is called Seriously I'm Kidding, and I read this so long ago, and at the time I just remember laughing out loud so much that I just don't want to get rid of it because of the memories that I have attached to the book, but I do know that Ellen DeGeneres is literally Satan. I'm aware, but I just have a lot of memories attached to the book. And my camera battery is flashing at me, so I'm gonna try to keep it short, but I really do hope you enjoyed this video um, and seeing my book collection. I have been wanting to film this video for a really long time, but one thing that I battle with myself a lot is that my bookshelves aren't really aesthetic, I guess, like the aesthetic of a booktuber. I don't have like those big bookshelves that go from like your, the floor to the top of your room, also because my room is really small and it will look weird, but I don't have that bookshelf that everyone has and that looks good in videos and that everyone loves. And that thought has made me not want to show you my bookshelves and not want to do a bookshelf tour and that just so silly. And even if I don't have that big bookshelf that is really aesthetic and really pretty, 
I still read and that's what matters. Uh, it's not the amount of books that I have, it's not the look of my bookshelves, it's what I read and me sharing what I read with you guys. This has nothing to do with like who has the better bookshelf. But yeah, I'm really glad that I finally showed you all of the books that I had. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't. And I will see you on my next video. Bye!